Good morning. Welcome to Worship with Wesley. I'm Pastor Carlene. So glad to be back uh, with you after a few weeks away and so looking forward to next week when we'll be um, gathering, hopefully in person, outdoors, um, right here at the church. This morning as we get ready uh, to enter into worship, I, uh, I want to invite you wherever you are. Just take a deep deep breath and be welcomed into a time of worship um, across the miles in the distance with others. Uh, we're also worshiping with you today. And if you have a candle, I invite you to light it as well as I light our Christ candle here. In a world where there is so much darkness, we light the light of Christ to remind us that the darkness cannot put out this light, that this light shines and will never ever be put out or overcome by the darkness of this world. And we light it to remind ourselves that this light is also in you and in me. And in worship, we just lean into this light and soak it up and let it shine um, in us and through us. And so as we, um, as we prepare our hearts to lean into the light, we think about those we love the most. We hold them in the light this morning, our neighbors, our friends, our enemies or perceived enemies. We hold the whole hurting world in this light. 
We pray that it would shine in every darkness. And we bring our whole selves as we are into worship and we pray that this light would shine into every darkness of our own as well. And finally, I invite you to join in our welcome statement as we virtually welcome one another and all who desire to come and to worship this morning. At Wesley, we believe that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. You are invited to worship, wonder, and discover God's grace with us. And, and to, to participate, participate fully in this community of faith. Whether you are young or old, single or married, gay or straight, full or empty, who you are and where you are on life's journey matters to us. And you are welcome here or wherever you may be to seek with us the God who seeks. That's all. That's all. That's all. <laughs> join me in our call to worship. How beautiful are the places where you live, O oh Lord. No church can contain you. Even the heavens are bursting with the goodness of your presence. May we be among those who find their strength in you. Hear our prayers today, holy God, as we let the goodness of your presence surround us. 
Come, let us worship God together. Welcome to Bible study today at Wesley. Today, we're going to talk about another parable called the parable of the talents. What is a talent? Well, it is a special gift that God gave to each of us. What are your special talents and what can you do with them? We'll talk about that more today during the children's Bible study lesson. Nothing in love 
Today's scripture is Colossians 3, verses 12 through 17. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another if any of you has agreements against someone. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms hymns and songs from the spirit singing to god with gratitude in your hearts and whatever you do whether in word or deed do it all in the name of the lord jesus giving thanks to god the father through him the word of life write it on our hearts hi friends good morning it is good to be back with you today. As you know, I've been away for a few weeks on uh, something called Renewal Leave, which is like a little bitty sabbatical. And uh, tagged on at the very end of it was um, some vacation time with family that was just really wonderful. And I just want to share my incredibly deep gratitude uh, for everyone who helped make it possible for me to be away for Gary and PJ and Sam and Tim and Josh who all stepped up and preached wonderful sermons while I was gone uh, for uh, the council who was so supportive of the leave for staff who just kept things rolling um, and uh, for all of you who just extended kindness and prayers and cards um, I'm so grateful uh, for each and every one of you. And I especially just want to shout out my gratitude for Josh, um, who already has two um, quite demanding jobs and who took, on, um, who took on some extra things for me this past month, both at work and at home, uh, and did so with so much love. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, as, I, uh, as I return today, um, I'm a little off my game, I can tell. Um, <laughs> I'm on about take six, I think, um, having been interrupted multiple times by um, dying batteries and really loud leaf blowers and uh, my own inner distractions. And so I'm, I'm coming to you um, trying, to get, trying to get back in the game after my time away, and I appreciate your grace for that. I know I'm coming back into a different situation than the one that I left. And um, we are just continuing to have our hearts and minds under siege uh, from daily unfolding global, national, local events that are just wearing on us. Um, the fire season that's now an annual thing, the devastating UN climate report that came out recently, the earthquake in Haiti, uh, Afghanistan. And of course, just uh, when we thought it was safe to go back in the water, we have this Delta driven COVID surge that's ravaging our nation um, just in time for school. <laughs> And I think even more prevalent than the COVID is our collective bone weary exhaustion from all of it. Um, I'm hearing you and I'm seeing you. And um, whenever I run into somebody who tells me they're great, I'm a little bit suspicious these days. Um, none of us are great. We're all wading through a lot of stuff. So I just, I, I wanted to come um, to come to you today holding out some gentle encouragement. Um, and I, I landed on this text from Colossians. I think it's I think it's beautiful. Uh, I think it's wise. And I also I love the metaphor that gets used here of, of clothing. <laughs> um, many of you uh, are watching this, um, maybe even when the premiere is rolling at 10 a.m. Sunday morning. And uh, I, I just like want to give a shout out, like, what are you wearing right now as you're watching this worship service? Um, 
If you are still in your pajamas, good for you. <laughs> You're not alone. Um, the pandemic has had this really interesting impact on how people dress and even like, you know, what clothes have been in demand. Um, the, the interesting supply and demand chain with clothing has been funny to watch over the past 18 months. We've been wearing a lot more just soft, comfortable things like sweats and leggings and PJs all day and things that are primarily driven uh, by comfort as opposed to fashion or professionalism. Those of us who've had to Zoom a lot are often um, seen looking professional from the shoulders up uh, with, you know, PJs and slippers or whatever below the camera line. And um, it's also uh, maybe fair that some of us have um, grown a little bit over the past 18 months. And as we go back out in public, we're finding we like looser, baggier things that fit a little easier around the middle. No shame in that. We are all surviving unprecedented times. Um, so just out of curiosity, how have you been dressing for the pandemic? <laughs> um, and maybe um, as our scripture invites us metaphorically, how have you been dressing for the pandemic? Um, I think if we were to peek into our pandemic closets, we'll find, um, we'll find a lot of mourning clothes as we've worn a lot of grief and sorrow on our bodies during this time. We've also put on resilience some days, despair on others. We've worn confusion like a hat, anger like gloves, fatigue like a sweater, determination like a coat of armor, and the cares of the world like a backpack on our shoulders. What have you been wearing? I want to share um, a little bit more personally uh, for a moment this morning. And I'll just be honest, this, the past year and a half, as incredibly hard as it's been, um, is still not as bad as the prior 18 months was for me personally. And uh, for some reasons that y'all know and other reasons that I really can't share in public, um, I had, I was starting the year 2020 um, completely burned out and, and even questioning whether my own health would allow me to continue uh, much longer in ministry. And I, I had finally gotten a little space uh, where I could pay attention to that. As Josh was casting off his mobility devices, um, I was employing a good therapist and a professional coach and was turning uh, to prioritizing my own uh, recovery. And then the pandemic hit. And it was kind of like, it was like being asked to, you know, start out on a, you know, a shadeless hot hike through a sandy desert already dehydrated and with no water and having no idea how long that journey would be. And um, man, I don't think any of us could have really anticipated then uh, in March of 2020 uh, that we would still be um, in the, like in a place that we are right now in August of 2021. So, uh, so I've been pretty burnt out, <laughs> um, soul weary. And when I arranged for um, this renewal leave this summer, I, I planned it with a lot of intention. Um, I didn't want to waste uh, any any bit of time. I didn't want to come to the end of the time and think, oh, I you know I didn't do what I should have done with the gift of this. And I so I, I set out with a lot of care. I needed rest a lot more than a nap. I needed some extended time free from obligation, free from others' expectations of me. 
I have had like three solid years of intermittent trauma and grief uh, for which I needed to attend and for which I had just not had enough time um, to do that. You know, if, if, if using that desert hike metaphor, it was like, you know, I'd get halfway through a glass of water and then the next thing would come along and knock it out of my hand and, and demand that I, that I just keep walking. I've often um, been in a position to, um, to tell others how important it is to attend to their grief because grief deferred, um, it just simmers and it grows and it will demand to have its day, to do its job. And I needed space to grieve. I needed some room um, to start healing some some big wounds. And I just, I needed to find, you know, a, a spring of living water and sit down next to it and just drink my fill over and over until my whole being could be rehydrated and filled up again. And I, I'm, I'm grateful to say that my time away did give me the opportunity to do some of that really good work. <laughs> um, drinking deeply of grace and rest, attending to grief and uh, attending to wounds. It's been important for me. And I also, I just, even in saying that, I just recognize the incredible privilege of being able to do something like that in a time when many, many people need and deserve the same kind of thing. I, I just, I'm looking at you teachers, nurses, doctors, people who've been trying to run small businesses, every parent of school age children, so many others. I. I'm not the only one who's been overwhelmed and burnt out with grief and fear and exhaustion. And um, to some extent, everyone who is alive and paying any attention at all is there too. And I wish, um, I wish for everyone to have the breathing room that they need uh, to do some of that restoration work. There is absolutely no shame in acknowledging that you need it. <laughs> One of the things I did um, on my leave was I, I went backpacking. Um, I was going to go with a friend and that didn't work out, but I just, I felt so compelled that I needed to do it. I just went on my own. And since I wouldn't have felt comfortable just, you know, hiking into the woods by myself, I, instead I planned this uh, three day, two night hike on the coast where I could stay in like hiker camps um, and still be, you know, not too far from civilization and also um, be at the ocean, a, a holy, sacred, restorative place for me. And I, so I, I did this and prepping and, and putting on one of these packs is, um, I mean, it's a really, really corny metaphor and I apologize for that. Um, but it, it still works. <laughs> I felt like when I, when I put that backpack, 35 pounds of it, um, when I loaded that onto my body, um, that experience was speaking to me like a metaphor the whole time. It was a physical expression of what my inner life had been like, uh, for so long. Um, <laughs> yeah, just having to carry so many heavy things and, and not being able to leave any of them out of the bag. Um, my height, it took me on a stretch of beach. Um, sometimes it was quiet and empty. Other times it was busy with people and that pack was heavy. You know, I'd done some training, but you know, probably not enough for what I was carrying. And I felt the weight of it with every single step I took. And I, I just couldn't help but notice when, you know, some unencumbered jogger would just go bounding along, you know, past me. And um, 
how many times I've felt like that in the last um, three years. <laughs> I'm like, other people are fine. Why can't I run like that? Um, forgetting the heavy weight that um, I've also been carrying. As I was hiking, you know, I, it, it was hard and I would have to take breaks and um, my short breaks would, would help, you know, they'd help. I'd be able to get back up and go, but as the miles added up, um, my capacity uh, between breaks kept being diminished. And as I'm describing this, I just wonder how many of you can feel this metaphor for yourselves. <laughs> the large packs you've been carrying around, the weight uh, you have been bearing. Um, I know many of you, you have some amazing survival gear in those packs of yours. And I, I've seen you build up your strength along the way so that you can manage the weight of the load that you have. But I am guessing you're also tired too. I spent a lot of time, uh, contemplating deeply, um, what it, what it means for us to live in the world we're actually in right now, as opposed to the world that uh, I wish we were living in, or even the world that um, we maybe used to take for granted. How do we live now, you know? I was cleaning out my office and I found this book someone left for me uh, some time ago. And uh, it was all about like overcoming hard times. I thought, oh, that's interesting. And I, I, I opened up to the table of contents and it felt like this quaint little glimpse into a bygone era. Um, the big hard things the book was written to help people overcome were things like temptation and doubt and family problems, and career choices. It was all these like, matters of personal angst and um you know there wasn't a single chapter on like global pandemics or deconstructing white supremacy or trying to shore up a collapsing democracy nothing like that <laughs> uh, it just it made me so nostalgic for those old timey sepia brown tinge days of 2015 when our energy could go to such matters of personal angst without this existential dread. Uh, the night before I set out on my backpacking adventure, um, I started to feel nervous about what I'd planned and I, I ultimately ended up changing um, my plan. Um, it turned out to be a good thing, but I, I laid out my pack um, because it was just so heavy and I, I went through every item and just carefully evaluated each thing. You know, do I need this? Do I really need it? You know, if I don't have it, what's the worst that could happen? And I, I, just, I just weighed everything, um, literally weighed some things and I managed to remove like a little over two pounds of stuff from my pack. But every bit of the, of the remaining 35 pounds was needed. It was water and food, the, the barest minimum clothing, backpack, or well, the pack itself, yeah, but you know, the, the tent, sleeping bag. And uh, I realized, you know, some journeys are like that. We're, sometimes you just need what you need and you have to figure out a way to carry the load. And that happens, that happens to many of the hard things that we're called to in different seasons of our lives. And while I was, while I was away, um, I, I did a similar process of evaluating my metaphorical backpack as well. What do I truly need um, to live well in the times we're living in? And examining what I've been carrying, things maybe I didn't need to have in my pack, things I really maybe needed to add. And I just, I started to really um, find some clarity. I started writing for myself um, a new, um, like a rule of life. 
if you're familiar with that term. Fresh with clarity, readily amendable as it has to adapt uh, to my return to the real world. Um, and it is absolutely full of essentials now. It's also clear of unnecessary things that I've let weigh me down. And starting, um, starting next week, uh, we're going to do a new series. I'm, I'm kind of tongue in cheek calling it the Survivor Series. I promise to share with you a little bit more about um, my own little rule of life, what that looks like. And um, we're going to be talking together and kind of offering an opportunity for anyone who wants to, to start creating their own as well. We're going to cover some big, broad topics like um, the centering values by which we live and also just some super practical things like what we do with social media or tangible things we can fold into our lives that help us to flourish um, instead of to languish. And for today, I, I think this lovely little passage in Colossians is just an excellent starting place for redesigning our pandemic wardrobes, reassessing uh, the way we approach our lives and the times we live in. We are reminded right off the bat in this text that we are God's people. We belong to the one who created us. We are precious and holy and dearly, deeply loved. And if that's all we talked about today, it would be enough just to take that in. That's like, that's like feeling a helium balloon and sticking it in your backpack. You're beloved. You are worthy of love. Your life matters to God. And then from this belovedness, it says we can put on compassion and then kindness. Both of them starting right here with our own selves and then moving outward. And also humility because gloating, arrogance, even when we know we're correct, is spiritual poison that invites us to stumble and embarrass ourselves. And then gentleness and patience, because we have no idea how thin the thread is by which those around of us might be hanging. We're asked to bear with each other because, you know, we aren't always our best selves when we're under pressure. And forgiving and receiving forgiveness, which can be really complicated, but is still just such an essential part of our journey together. Our scriptures remind us of the peace and gratitude and wisdom and mutual care that we're invited to put on like a perfectly coordinated, beautiful outfit as followers of Jesus Christ. And we're also reminded again and again and again, the whole point of this whole story that we're in that over all of these other things, we're to put on a big, huge, giant parka of love. As we navigate um, so many things right now, rising infection rates, constantly exhausting, shifting practices for COVID, concerns about our kids and school, the state of the hospitals, and all these overhanging existential threats that keep invading our lives. It is a good thing to turn our eyes to this place and be reminded of our essential calling, that we dress ourselves every morning in the clothing that is going to sustain our lives, that is going to bring goodness to this world, that is going to give us meaning and over all of it to put on every day this love. Even when love itself is a heavy garment to bear. So my friends, um, I come to you um, encouraged today, with gratitude today, 
And I hope that you too will be encouraged. All the wisdom and knowledge and inspiration we've ever been given is for such a time as this. In the grace and in the power of the Spirit of God, we are being given the wardrobe of faith that we need and the strength to take the next step on the path before us. And we walk this path not alone, but together, draped in a cloak of the love that comes to us from the one who made us, the one who redeemed us, the one who comforts us, and the one who empowers us to live as we've been called to live. So may you feel that cloak of love on your shoulders today and in the days to come as you face your week. Amen.
I have several announcements today, so I'll jump right in. First of all, um, I am back and I am once again hosting uh, coffee out on the patio on Wednesday mornings from 10 to 1130. Um, it's a really lovely time uh, to just meet people, hang out, have good conversation and connect with each other, which is something we all need. So um, I remind you that that's happening and invite you to come. Um, if you have been uh, watching, um, able to see um, updates, SoCo is on the verge of opening. It looks like they will have a soft opening sometime next week and uh, will be open for business on the 1st of September. Um, it's looking beautiful in there and uh, we will put the word out as soon as the open sign comes on. I invite you uh, to come down, grab a cup of coffee um, and check out this new um, beautiful space that we are able to share. Next Sunday, August 29th, we are going to return to in-person worship. Um, it's going to be a little different though, so be sure to write this down. We're going to be meeting at 5.30 in the evening uh, when uh, we have a little more shade and um, it's a little uh, easier to navigate some of the things related to the service. And um, you're just invited to come uh, as you are, be comfortable and casual. Um, we'll, be, um, we'll be making a really lovely space to worship and to connect with one another. Um, we are, as you know, um, experiencing the worst um, surge of the pandemic right now with our hospitals filling up. Um, and so, it is really important that you, if you come, that you know that you've got to wear a mask. We are hoping to have um, sort of a bring your own picnic. We're not having a potluck where we share food, but if you could bring a picnic dinner and you know eat it in your seat from your lap, we're hoping to be able to do that after the service um, and just extend our time together a little bit. If you uh, cannot be vaccinated, if you're an adult who isn't vaccinated, we would ask that you would participate in worship from the live stream, um, keeping yourself and others safe. Um, we will be live streaming worship. So for those of you who can't be in person, you can still join us. And um, we are also um, still gonna be having kids time with Kayla. Um, for elementary school kids, uh, kindergarten through fifth grade. Kayla is in need of one or two adult volunteers uh, who can help um, support her time with the kids uh, during church on, on Sunday at 530. If you can do that, please let her, me, or Sue know as soon as possible so we can plan for that. And we... Um, in consideration of everything, just don't feel that we can safely offer um, a child care or class option for our kiddos um, below kindergarten age. Um, but you can still bring them. Um, they can be with you during worship. And since we are outside, you're welcome to like bring a blanket and spread out um, and be as comfortable, um, as comfortable as you can in worship together. I just, uh, I know that we're all very tired of this. Um, I personally am exhausted <laughs> from having to again and again and again reassess risk and make hard decisions um, that factor in our need to be together and um, our need to keep each other safe. Um, Delta has been a really unfortunate and frustrating uh, wrench in all of our best hopes for where we'd be right now. And I just want to express again how much I appreciate all of your flexibility, your patience, and all of you who are doing such a wonderful job of doing your part to love your neighbor, to keep each other safe. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And it's um, with absolute confidence in our Wesley family that Whatever this is, we will persevere together. Um, 
As we go um, to pray, I invite you, if you'd like, uh, to share your joys and concerns, any prayer requests or celebrations you'd like in the chat on the side. And also just remind you that today um, is the fourth Sunday, which is Fish Sunday. And if you would like to give um, a special donation to fish, as we normally would um, in honor of any celebrations we're having in our lives, you can do that on our website, wesleyeugene.org. On the donate page, you can just designate a donation to fish. And again, I thank you all for your ongoing faithful support of the mission and ministry of Wesley. Um, you have been amazing and you continue to be. And with that, I just invite you to pray with me. Loving God of life and hope and love and joy and peace, we lift up to you all that is on our hearts and minds today. Um, the things that we are grateful for, that we are celebrating, we thank you. The things that are heavy and hard and exhausting, we lift them up to you. So many things come to mind. And as we open our hearts to you in prayer, we know that you know each one. We ask that your light would shine in every darkness, that everyone equipped to act in their little sphere of influence would do so in the direction of love and of justice. We thank you for providing in good times and in bad, for holding us together and holding us up and showing us the way. We thank you. We love you. Amen. One, two, three, four. <laughs> i
Now as beloved children of God, siblings of the beloved community, I pray that you would go encouraged, filled up inside, wrapped up in a cloak of love, and ready to go and serve God and one another in the days to come. Go in peace. Amen. Today, please open your Bibles to read Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 through 30. So the story today is called the parable of the talents. Now remember, a parable is a type of story Jesus would tell so we would learn something from it. So a talent in this type of story can mean two different things. It could be talking about money back in biblical times or it could be talking about our gifts or abilities, something special and amazing that God gave just to you, almost like a superpower. So Jesus's stories had more than one meaning. For example, this story is about talents, which again means a large amount of money during the biblical times. Today, a talent might be worth a million dollars. So a talent in this story could also mean our gifts, something special and amazing that we have. Maybe you're good at math. Maybe you are good at writing or reading. Maybe you're good at sports. Maybe you're good at dance. We all have special talents. So the parable starts like this. A man decided to go on a long trip. So he called his servants and asked them to take care of his house, his stuff, and his money while he was away. Now, keep in mind that the man in this story is like God, and the man's servants are God's people, which are you and me. So the man in this story trusted his servants and believed that they would take care of his special and valuable things. So the man decided 
to give one servant five talents of money. So let's say that's about $5 million today. That's a lot of money if you've ever played Monopoly. He gave his second servant two talents, which let's say is equal to $2 million today. And to the last servant, he gave one talent, which is equal to, again, about a million dollars today. So he gave each servant a large amount he thought they could handle or according to their abilities. So the man left on this trip and the servants each did something with the money that they received. The man with the five talents or $5 million went right away and used his money and he got five more. So that equals 10 talents. Now the man with the two talents also used his money wisely and he gained two more talents. So this is equal to now four talents. But the man with one talent took his talent and buried it in the ground to keep the money safe. He didn't even try to do something with it, kind of like a dog that buries a bone in the yard. Now this third servant could have bought some seeds, he could have planted a garden, he could have done something with the money, but he didn't do anything. So after a nice long trip, the master came back and wanted to know what his servants did with his money. The first man with the five talents said, you trusted me with five talents and I made five more. His master smiled and replied, great job, good and faithful servant. You are trustworthy with a few things, so I will put you in charge of lots of things. Come celebrate with me. Now, the same thing happened with the second servant. The man with the two talents came forward and said, you trust in me with two talents and I also made two more. The master smiled and replied, great job, good and faithful servant. You are trustworthy with a few things, so I will put you in charge of lots of things. Come and celebrate with me. Then the man who received the one talent came and told his servant, I know how hard you work for your money. So I was afraid to lose any of it. I decided to bury it and keep it safe. Here is your one talent back. Now, the master was not very impressed with this and said, you lazy servant, at the very least, you could have taken the money to the bank and you would have at least collected some interest from it. He immediately took the talent away from the man and gave it to the first man who used his money to make more. So our abilities are our special gifts that God gave to each of us. Some of us are good at memorizing. Some of us are better at math than reading and others are better at reading than math. Some of us are better at singing or playing an instrument. And some of us are better at sports or schoolwork. Some of us are even better at knowing how to help others. Some of us are problem solvers and some of us are more generous. Our abilities are something special we have that's different than anyone else. So the point was trying to make, or Jesus was trying to make in telling the story is that they gave you special abilities. You are very valuable and you should each use your talents. Maybe you're not sure your special abilities and what they are. Ask your families or your teachers what they think your gifts are. Listen and watch when others compliment you or notice something good about what you're doing. To you, it might be something small, but to God, it's a special gift. Also try and encourage and compliment others if you notice something special in them. Remember to compliment your friends, your teachers, your siblings, and your parents on their special abilities. So in closing today, I want you to talk with someone in your family What's one thing you learned about from today's parable? Share a talent you have. How did you get good at that thing? 
What happened to the guy who just buried the money? How can you use your special talents to help others? And lastly, how will you apply this lesson to your life this week? Stay tuned for a short recap of today's story, The Parable of the Talents. Once there was a wealthy man preparing to leave on a long journey. He gathered his servants together and gave careful instructions on what to do while he was away. I will be leaving you shortly and may not return for quite some time, he explained to them. I am putting you in charge of my wealth so that my estate will continue to prosper even while I am away. So the master divided his wealth among his servants based on each one's ability to manage it. The first servant was given five talents. Each talent was equal to thousands of dollars. This servant took the sum of money given to him, and he immediately went to work, using what he was given to make more money. He knew this would please the master. His efforts produced five more talents. The second servant was given two talents, not as much as was given the first servant, but still a great deal of money. This servant took what was given to him and, like the first servant, dutifully invested it to make more money. He too knew this would please the master. His efforts produced two more talents. The third servant was given one talent, less than the other servants, but still a good amount of money. This servant failed to see the value in the opportunity that the master had given him and fearing any risk to it, promptly went out and dug a hole and buried it in the ground. Many days, weeks, and months passed, and finally the master returned. Eager to find out the condition of his property and wealth, he called his servants together to hear what they had done with what he had given them to manage. Each servant approached the master to give their report. The first two servants proudly showed their master that they had doubled what he had given them. The master smiled. Well done, my good and faithful servants. You have been faithful with a few things. I will now put you in charge of many things. He added, come and let us celebrate. Then the last servant, who had been trusted with one talent, approached the master and accused him saying, you are a hard man to please, so in fear of you, I buried the money you gave me into the ground. Here is the one talent that belongs to you. The master was furious. You wicked and lazy servant, he said. I gave you an amount of property I knew you would be able to manage, but you did nothing with it. At least you could have put it in the bank to earn a small amount of interest. Now you will lose your talent to the servant who gained five. With that, the master took the only talent the servant had and cast him out of his household forever. <laughs>